Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. It is the 24th of May 2011, and this is Bidders BBB, episode 1, and uh, God, I'm nervous. Episode 1, whew, but excited, gotta be excited, because we're here. And um, a primer, because this is episode 1, what the hell are you watching? Why is some guy speaking to a webcam? Why has he got a white eyebrow? All these questions answered over time, but at the very least, I figure I'll tell you what this show's about. Uh, Bitters BBB is generally uh, a weekly 30-minute show that I'm going to try to continue going on, um, but I need to get episode one out, and uh, I'll feel more encouraged after that. Um, the goal is that I will go through a ge- video game playing live at the same time I and with a topic in mind I provide some game design analysis um, so obviously the best way to start this will be to give you an example hence episode one so today Bioshock uh, if you've played it it's a fantastic game and that's why it's a good starter um, the topic of today though will be the atmosphere in Bioshock now, what I mean by this is that when you play a game, a games want to immerse you within them. Uh, some do this through stories, some just do it through solid gameplay. Um, art is usually a big factor, and Bioshock is one of those games that draws you in uh, from a very early stage. So that's what we're going to be analysing today, uh, how it does this, um, why it does it, and... Um, We'll just, as I play through, uh, bit by bit, we'll come across, um, and hopefully I don't stuff up what I'm trying to, what I want to say about it. Okay, so let's fire up Bioshock. I hope that's not too loud. That's my only issue. Audio, audio and video. Look, as we go, audio and video, the quality will pick up. I don't know if you can hear that, but... When I alt tab uh, Bioshock, there's like a d- 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 quality will come, uh, as maybe will confidence. We'll see, you know, that's 50 50 at best. But, uh. So let's start with Bioshock. New game. And, um. Well. I don't want to die, but I don't want to look like a pussy, because I need to make myself look good, but, so, if I go easy, I look a bit like, what are you even playing this for? Jeez. Anyway, I have played a lot, but I don't want to lose to the first enemy. Just in case. Alright, starting up Bioshock. Um, even the loading screen gives atmosphere. I, don't know if, uh, I wasn't even thinking of that, but look at that, just showing a moon, clouds, um, struggling to load. Yep, sitting in a fantastic atmosphere. Not really. Alright, I'll be quiet for cutscenes though. They told me, son, you're special. You were born to do great things. You know what? They were right. That's only a by my estimate, a 30 second intro, and already the tone is set. So what I mean, if I can just pause and cut back to me, the first thing that should stick in your mind from even on a 30, that 30 second intro are the screams. Uh, people react to them. 
they've they, they've got a instinct. Uh, what do you say? At screams like shattering glass. They make people go. They cringe straight away. They, it's a natural reaction. Uh, if someone screams, you instantly a bit of fear is invoked in your in your mind, in your heart, and um, if you go through like the start, I could go over that and again and again, and I might. We'll see. But it sets the atmosphere straight away. Firstly, you already have a time setting. If you look at the aircraft, the smoking in planes, it's all you know straight away. Uh, it's a little bit older than where we currently are. Um, even though they've got this, they give you the 1960s, but you've also been just sort of immersed in it straight away, how it's going to be like. You, you've seen you know, the smoking in planes, the seats, um, just the general feel of the airplane is enough to give you that setting. But within that, it's followed up closely by screams of something going wrong, which sets this slightly darker atmosphere. Um, so we'll come to that more. But even if you go through that, I want to go through that again, straight away. Because if you listen closely to the music, it's instantly haunting. Uh, even though the screams are the thing that sticks in your mind, they stick there because you're also in the background hearing this quite haunting tone um, it, like which which doesn't stick in your mind but it sets, sets this atmosphere that Bioshock tries to uh, lead towards quite early on. So I'm actually going to uh, quit to main menu and actually go through that again. And if you can, just listen to the background music and you'll know and you'll notice straight away uh, that it's very haunting. I mean you couldn't put this music you know with little ponies in front. So I'll be quiet again for the cutscene. They told me. Son, you're special. You were born to do great things. You know what? They were right. So I hope you know that time. Uh, the music actually cuts off the moment the screams happen. So it's like a foreboding music. Um, also, now noticing second time through, you actually hear the plane crash, which leans towards this. So, in water? Okay, that's not haunting. Oh, you've been a, in a plane crash. Yeah, other games have done that. Better things. Oh, the world's on fire. Oh. Propeller goes past, things falling, you're in immediate danger. It's the th thing Bioshock gets across straight away. So now, we're looking at Bioshock. Immediate danger. Um, this sets, again, the tone that this game isn't going to be all, you know, flowers and roses and ponies and all nice things. Candy. Oh man, get some chocolate now. And obviously, you'll look at this and go, well, duh, there's going to be danger. But uh, it's an important thing to sort of get across fast. Sorry, I'm going to come back to myself. A lot of games, they'll take half an hour to start, and then they'll get into this very slow tutorial levels and then they'll hold your hand through early fights and all this. Bioshock straight away goes for the you're right now in danger. Uh, you know, there's propellers flying past, everything's on fire and you're only human. Well, you can just only assume so far. Uh, this is a key aspect of the atmosphere that Bioshock's trying to get across, which is, what's the atmosphere? Horror would be the atmosphere I think Bioshock's aiming for. Sure, we'll go through, we'll see there's 
you know, lots of sci-fi, fantasy. Um, they try to get some other themes in there, but the reason Bioshock becomes memorable is the horror and thriller uh, tone it sets. Um, if anything, I think that's the genre it's more in over... Well, the genre of the story and the uh, artistic style is in, of course, the gameplay is FPS, sci-fi FPS. It blends those a bit. Anyway, but by putting you in danger straight away, even though you can't die from that, you're thinking, shit, I've got to escape. There's fire, I'm going to drown, there's propellers, there's electricity going around, it's all dark, I'm a sole survivor. Um, so in, uh, survival instincts kicked in, and uh, it just makes sense. All players instantly go, oh, straight away, I'd better get out of here. Um, only those who like to just break games and mess around just stay in the one spot. But what the game designer is trying to get across is that, look, you're in trouble, move along. Like They're not saying, oh, you know, when you're ready, go to the lighthouse, you know, explore. There's a, they're, they're pushing you there by putting you in this sense of false danger. So I'll cut back to that. Um... I kind of love the water in this. I suppose the one thing they had to do right, um, considering how much water, it, like, it's an underwater city. Seriously. Beautiful water. So, danger averted. Everyone dead. You're it. Well, as far as you know. Um, so, yeah, foreboding lighthouse. Just little things that uh, make this set piece. The moon, uh, the rolling clouds, and generally just quite, like literally, moon, pure darkness. Uh, you could say, well, that's not very realistic lighting, but that's mood lighting. Like, not mood lighting, like you bring a girl home and you get something to set the mood for a good night, but mood like you're setting up this is a bit scary. Just little things like that. Anyway, um, something else I love Bioshock plays with, but I won't even venture in here for a second. That is pure darkness. Like, like I can play around with angles and whatnot and occasionally see through something, but that's not just, uh, you know, oh, poor lighting. That is the unknown. Look at that. Can you see anything? No. You can barely see two feet in front of you, and then you think, oh, maybe I'll just stick with the light. What happened? Oh. So, pure darkness, foreboding. I mean, that's not my lighting. If I, if I go my options, graphics options, uh, adjust brightness. Ooh. The dark grey box is just very easy. If anything, it's too bright. Uh, it should be closer to something like that. So I've got it brighter than it probably should be. And that's pure darkness. Just little things like that. It's part of game design. Um, I should actually spend some time what... Well, if you've looking at this, you might have an idea what game design is. But I my flatmate, uh, when I was said I'm gonna be I wanna be a game designer, like it's the thing I wanna do. He literally goes, What what's a game designer? What what do you do? Like you're not coding, you're not doing art. And even though nowadays, uh especially the smaller studio designers end up taking a little on that. Uh generally my philosophy towards game design is not that they come up with the idea. They go, oh, I've got this brilliant idea. It's going to be a underwater city. And it's a bit dark, you know. It's going to have some guns and magic. And that's how it works. That's not a game designer. That's a pitch. A game designer takes this idea. Much in the same way that, if you know anything about IT, a business analyst takes a requirement from the customer and says, all right, let me build that for you. So a game designer will take...